With Season 2 coming out soon, all of your DMZ mission progress is going to be wiped, but any insured weapon slots that you've unlocked are going to stay. That's been confirmed by Infinity Ward. So now's a great time to try and power on, complete all of those missions you've left behind, and I've got guides on every single mission in the game to help you complete that. Check out my other videos for Legion and White Lotus, and now today I've got the Black Mouse guide for you with tips and tricks on how to complete every single mission for Black Mouse. The sponsor of today's video is FlexiSpot. They sell standing desks and they were kind enough to send me over their E7 model, which I've been trying out and I couldn't be happier with it. Standing desks are a great idea for people like me who work from home. I'm sitting in the same position morning and afternoon. So it's really nice to have a standing desk where at the touch of a button, I can make it go up to standing height and then I can give my legs and my back a bit of a stretch and just work for a while standing up. Then if I get a bit tired of standing, I can just put it straight back down. One of the things that really impressed me about this is I got a pretty big desk. There's all different kinds of desktops you can get, all different colors and stuff like that. I've gone for a big white 160 by 80 centimeter desktop with the black legs, and this thing can hold all of my gear. It can hold up to 125 kilograms and still move really, really quietly, really, really quickly. It doesn't seem to be struggling at all. So I've got both my PCs on here, as well as all of my monitors, as well as all of my peripherals, and it's still working absolutely fine. Just with a touch of a button, you can have four different presets. You can choose, okay, now I want to be standing, now I want to be sitting, and you can have a couple of other presets if you want. Maybe if you've got somebody else who uses this desk sometimes. And there's cable management underneath it, so you can try and keep some of your cables tidy. I do the best I can. I know they're not the tidiest. But massive thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, the link's in the description below. To start the Black Mouse missions, you need to have unlocked Tier 3 for White Lotus and Legion, which means completing the Tier 2 story missions. Once you've done that, you'll have access to Tier 1 of Black Mouse, so let's get started with the guides. The first mission is called Always Listening, and it's actually pretty hard for a Tier 1 mission. It asks you to pick up 5 radios dropped by neutralised Alcatala members, and then kill 15 hostiles marked by radios. So this is all AI kills, that's simple enough. But the problem is, often you'll only find the radios after you've killed all of the AI. So what you really need to do is kill some AI, wait until they drop a radio, then instead of picking it up straight away, try to find some more AI. So maybe wait until a helicopter drops in or a truck comes by, something like that, or you find another group of AI and then pick up that radio and immediately kill them all. Kills count from anyone in your group, so as soon as one person picks up a radio, everyone needs to get killing AI as quickly as possible. Any AI have a chance of dropping the radios, so you'll get this one done eventually, but if you want to get it done quickly, just don't pick up those radios too soon. So the next mission, Weapons Research, used to be bugged, and it's mostly fixed now. So it asks you to complete one hunt contract, that's the contracts with the little skull icon where you have to go kill the entirety of an enemy team, and then extract an enemy operator's weapons. Now the first part of this, completing a hunt contract, shouldn't be too hard. We like to do these right at the start of the game because then you might get people who are just coming back after a wipe, they might not have proper armor or proper weapons. You're way more likely to find a team near you as well because no one would have extracted yet, and you're much less likely to come up across a team that's got like six players in it so do that at the very beginning of the game and then just pick up both of the weapons that an enemy's dropped if they've got two weapons pick them both up if they've got three weapons pick them all up there's been a bit of an argument about what counts for this whether or not it has to be an insured weapon rather than a contraband weapon so if you find one that definitely looks like an insured weapon make sure you pick that up and then go extract with it if it doesn't work, just do it a few times. For me, it unlocked the first time after they fixed it, but a couple of my friends have had to do this a couple of times before it works. So just keep trying. The next mission, Vintage Collection, is one of the easiest ones in this tier. This just asks you to loot 12 liquor or wine bottles and then sell 12 liquor or wine bottles at a shop. You find these all over the place. If you look anywhere where there's cash registers, often you'll get them. Anywhere where there's fridges, they often have a lot of wine bottles in them, sometimes liquor. If you can get down to the resort on the south coast, just to the west of Sarif Bay, often you'll find a bunch of wine bottles there. So just loot 12 of them and then sell them as soon as you get them and you'll get this one finished easily. The next mission is another easy one, Cargo Keeper. You just have to complete a cargo delivery contract, so that could be the land or the water ones, and then fully repair and refuel the transport vehicle. So when you pick up one of these contracts, if it's a land one, it will show you the location of a warehouse where you'll get an armored LTV inside it with the turret on top. If you do a boat one, a helicopter will come down and drop an armored boat. As soon as you get into the vehicle, an attack helicopter will be spawned and it will chase you. So this is a little bit trickier to do solo. Not impossible, but a bit trickier. 
If you've got friends, they can be using the turret on top of the LTV or the turrets on the armored boat to destroy that helicopter. While you're driving, you can dodge most of the helicopter's attacks. So the helicopter will always start shooting ahead of you and then pull it back towards itself. So if you're constantly weaving left and right, you can see where the bullets start landing and then just avoid that area. It's a little bit harder to avoid the rockets, but they don't ever seem to aim directly at you. So hopefully it will just miss. Now, when you get near the drop off location, which will be marked on your map, that's what you'll be heading towards. The helicopter will actually back off when you're kind of 100 meters away or so from it. And then when you see the helicopter with the hook hanging down, just drive your vehicle directly underneath it, it'll pick up and then that'll be completed. To complete the rest of this mission, you then need to take the vehicle over to a petrol station, a gas station, and just make sure it is fully repaired. So you have to wait until it's completely repaired. If there's AI around, make sure you kill them. Otherwise, if they shoot the vehicle, it'll stop it repairing for a few seconds. Make sure it's completely refueled and fully repaired, and then that mission should complete for you. The next mission, One Man Army, sounds a little bit intimidating, but it's super easy. It just asks you to infill without any teammates and then extract in the same deployment. So to do this, just go in by yourself, make sure squad fill is turned off, and immediately get to the first extract. Hopefully there'll be one near you, but it doesn't matter too much. If there's one a little bit closer to the center of the map, that's often a little bit better because there's no players that spawn around the center of the map. You just want to get out as quickly as possible. If you've got some armor and weapons and you don't mind fighting some AI, you could do a hostage contract by yourself and then that will give you an exfil that obviously there's not going to be any other players at. The next mission, Team Player, is another super easy one. It just asks you to hold up to request to join with two nearby enemy operators. So when it says hold up, it means hold your ping button. I know it might be different on the PC. And then just request to join other players when you're near them. They don't have to accept or anything like that. So if you want to find other players, you could just take a hunt squad contract and then get close to them, get within the radius of the green circle and then request to join them. And that one should complete really, really easily. Once you've completed five out of the six tier one missions, then you should unlock the story mission for tier one, who's watching. This one is a little bit tricky. It asks you to acquire a tactical camera. That's no problem. You can just put it in your loadout as a field upgrade before you go. And then set up a tactical camera pointing at the underpass in Rohan Oil. That part is a little bit trickier. We found that it worked if we went to the underpass at Rohan Oil and then threw the camera on the ground. So we just threw it on the ground in the middle and that worked. And then it says snapshot five enemies in Rohan Oil with a tactical camera. Now it's worth noting it doesn't have to be the same tactical camera. Once you've got that second objective completed for pointing it at the underpass, then you can just use tactical cameras wherever in Rohan Oil and just make sure you tag five AI. On that underpass, if you look to the left and right, often you'll find some shield enemies will start coming out, so you might be able to get it done with that one. The first mission of Tier 2 is one that I think lots of people have been stuck on for a very long time. It's called Custom Hardware, and it asks you to deliver one GPU to the dumpster dead drop near the railroad north of Alsam Cemetery, deliver four game consoles to the same dead drop, and extract 20 hard drives. Now, finding that GPU is difficult. If you've got any keys, just open up any way you can with those keys. You've always got a chance of finding a GPU. We've weirdly found a bunch of them while we've been looking for golden skulls lately. So we've just been using keys to open up everywhere, opening up every safe that we can, opening up boxes that get dropped, the supply drops that get dropped from planes and things like that. There's a chance that if you go into the Hotel 302, so that's in the flooded village, you know, that big apartment building that you can drop in from the roof, sometimes you'll find a GPU in there and you don't need a key to get in there. But do be aware that lots of players know about this, so they often go there. And if you manage to get a key to the crypto farm, which is also in that flooded village, we found one there the first time that we looked. But it's not guaranteed. It's not always going to be there. As soon as you do find a GPU, make sure you take it to this dumpster dead drop. It's just behind a little house. There's often loads of AI around here, but if you've got smoke grenades or something, you can just kind of get there quickly and drop it off. Games consoles are much easier to find. We often find them in lockers, so in the warehouses north of the city. We often find a bunch of games consoles. They're just littered around everywhere, so that shouldn't be too hard to find. And then finally, extract 20 hard drives. You don't drop those off at a dead drop like you do the games consoles and the GPU. Instead, you just get out with those. Hard drives are really easy to find. You'll often find them in PCs. If you go to the server building just near the police academy in the east of the map, there's two floors full of rooms with computers in them, loads of computers in there. So you can just go through all of those, check every single computer, and you should find those hard drives fairly easily. Other buildings that are good for these are any sort of office -y type buildings like the banks. They have loads of computers in too. And remember, you just need them in your inventory when you leave. You don't need to get all 20 in one game. So you can do this across many games. 
The second tier 2 mission is another difficult one, it's called Based and it asks you to deliver 15 screwdrivers to the dumpster dead drop at a junkyard in the village southeast of Alsherim Pass and then deliver 20 light bulbs and 5 electric drills to that same dead drop. Now, the screwdrivers and the light bulbs often aren't too hard to find. If you go in any kind of warehousey type buildings or even shops, you'll often find loads of light bulbs in. Places where there's lots of shelves, you'll often find those. The electric drills took me quite a long while to find, but again, similar sorts of buildings, so just warehouse type buildings, garages. Check every toolbox you find and hopefully you'll find them. Unfortunately, the radioactive electric drill, which you actually get from a different mission later on in Black Mouse, doesn't count for this, which is a little bit of a shame. The dead drop is really easy to find. It's just in the junkyard. It's kind of like a disused garage type place, um, just to the southeast of Alsherim Pass. Very, very easy and safe to get to that one. The third mission for tier two down and out isn't too difficult. It asks you to acquire a raid weapon stash contract and then complete that raid weapon stash contract without any teammates being downed. So if you're doing this solo, you can probably manage to do it. You just get a raid weapon stash. It looks like a sort of vault icon and then it will take you to a stronghold that you'll have to fight past some AI to get to a big vault upstairs somewhere usually. And then once you trigger it, waves of enemies will start coming in. If you've got mines, claymores and things like that, it helps a bunch, maybe stims, make sure you've got lots of ammunition before you start this if you've got teammates this makes it much much easier just cover any of the entrances normally there'll be like one staircase where all of the enemies come up so you can just hide in the room of the vault and then kill any enemies if they get anywhere near if anyone on your team gets downed while this is going on it'll cancel the mission which really really sucks so don't do this if you've got like randoms who are off doing something else while you're doing the mission it does take quite a long time to complete the next mission on rails is much much easier than the others it just asks you to kill 28 enemies while on the train you don't even have to do it in one mission but just hop on a train and shoot enemies as you go past them unfortunately a lot of ai don't really sort of congregate in the areas around the train tracks but you will find some especially when it goes past places like the port and over some of the bridges you'll find loads of enemies around there it helps if you've got a sniper rifle for this one just because a lot of the enemies will actually be quite a long way away but because you can get this done over multiple missions you will definitely get it done eventually it's not too difficult at all the next mission, Silent Killer, is another easy one. It asks you to kill four, eliminate HVT contract targets using suppressed weapons, and kill 20 enemies using suppressed weapons. So just get a suppressed weapon, an insured weapon, or if you've killed some of the armored enemies near the end of a game of DMZ, they drop a suppressed M4 that works for this. Any suppressed weapon at all, just pick up some HVT contracts, which are the ones with the little crosshairs on where you have to go kill some AI, and kill all of the enemies there using the suppressed weapons. Once you've done four of them, you probably will have killed 20 enemies as well using the suppressed weapons, so that one will be completed. The next mission, Weapons Case, can be a little bit tricky, but if you've got a squad, it shouldn't be too hard. So it asks you to complete free secure Intel contracts. That's easy, it's just the folder ones. So you pick up the contract, it will show you where a laptop is, you go interact with that. Then it will show you where a radio tower is, you climb up to the top of that, interact with the computer at the top, and then just wait for it to upload. Now that will trigger a commander to be marked on your map. If the Juggernaut is still alive guarding the weapons case, that will be marked, it will show you exactly where they are. If not, it should spawn a commander helicopter, which are the attack helicopters. You can kill those, it will still count for the mission, and they're very easy to kill. Sometimes when we've completed intel contracts, they haven't spawned, just their loot has spawned somewhere, like they died immediately, which is a bit weird. But anyway, you are going to have to kill at least one Juggernaut, because you need to extract a weapons case. So, the Juggernaut will be marked on a map from the beginning of the game anyway. There'll be like a big circle showing you the area they're in. As soon as you go in that area, and be aware, if you're in a vehicle, it'll get DDoSed and shut down, so don't go there in a helicopter. But once you get in that area, the Juggernaut will be somewhere near you. It'll start running towards you if you're the first players there. You need to kill that Juggernaut, and then it will drop a weapons case that you can then try and extract with. A few things to note here. First of all, the Juggernaut is super tough. It takes a lot of damage, and it will kill you very, very fast with the minigun. So just make sure, wherever you're going to engage it, make sure you've got lots and lots of cover. Maybe try and have some stun grenades or flash grenades, because they'll disorient it and let you get a few hits on them. If you've got a squad to do this, the Juggernaut will only shoot at one player at a time. It doesn't change targets very quickly. So just work out who he's starting to shoot at, and then the other two players can go and shoot him in the back. You should be able to kill him fairly quickly. He doesn't have, like, an infinite amount of health. Once you kill him, he'll drop the weapons case, and then as soon as you pick that up, all of the players on the map will kind of know where you are. It doesn't update constantly, but they will have a decent idea of where you are and which exfil you're going to. If you want to make this a bit easier for yourself, 
before you go kill the juggernaut, get a hostage contract, complete it up to the point where the hostage helicopter comes, take the hostage right next to that helicopter and just set them on the ground, and then go kill the juggernaut. Then as soon as you've picked up the weapon case, you can just drop down to where the hostage helicopter is, you can put the hostage on the helicopter and then extract with the hostage and the weapons case. That will get it done super quickly and other players won't realize that you're about to extract because the helicopter won't show up on their map. So that's an awesome way to do this. Obviously you need to kill three commanders, so if you fail the weapons case the first time, just go back and then kill the juggernaut again, eventually you'll get it. For the last mission of tier two for Black Mouse, Espionage, you actually need the Satik Poppy Farmer house key and you can get this from a White Lotus mission in tier three that gives it to you. That mission is called Robin Hood, so if you complete that, it will give you the key you need, or you can just find it as a random drop. But anyway, for this mission, for espionage, you need to go into that house, so the Satik Poppy Farmer house, it's just near Satik Caves, kind of on the west side of it, and loot the target's laptop, that'll be dropped on the ground. Then you need to pick up that laptop and deliver it to the dumpster dead drop near the train tracks. So that's just near the cemetery, so you need to go all the way south to go drop that off there. And then in that dead drop, a new item will appear, which is the hack laptop. You need to take that out of the dead drop, which is a little bit weird, make sure you don't lose it. Pick up that hack laptop, take it back to the farmer's house, the one where, where you picked up the first laptop from, and then there'll be a prompt on the ground and you can interact with it to drop it there. This sounds like a bit of a pain, but it's not too bad. You don't really have to go through the middle of Satik Caves. It's a lot easier if you've got a vehicle to drive between the two locations. But as long as you've got that Poppy Farmer house key, you should get this done fairly easily. Now we're on to tier three and the missions get even harder. So the first one, Perfection, is Possible solo, but super difficult. So I would strongly suggest you do this in a squad. You have to complete a raid weapon stash contract without taking body damage. So that means you can take armor damage, that's fine, but as soon as you take any body damage at all, even just full damage, it will end this mission. So the way we did this was kind of cheesing it really. We just had the person who had this mission go and hide in a bathroom somewhere. Make sure it's somewhere where there's no AI, just a random room somewhere where no one's gonna find them. And then the rest of the team go and start that contract. You can't take damage from the second the mission is picked up, not even from when you start drilling the vault. So the person who is trying to complete this mission needs to stay completely safe. The rest of the squad don't, they can get hurt, that doesn't matter at all. So they can go complete the raid weapon stash contract just like they did before. And once it's complete, this mission should be done for you. The next mission, Quick and Dirty, is much easier than it sounds. It asks you to complete and eliminate HVT contract in under two minutes. That's actually not too bad because often the HVT contracts, the enemies will spawn super close to where you pick it up. So just rush there and immediately try to spot the HVT. They'll have different clothes on. They might have like yellow or blue clothes on. So they're fairly easy to spot. Kill them as quickly as possible and make sure you run over their body to complete the mission. If you've got a squad for this, it helps if maybe you pick up a contract in the city and have them high up somewhere like on top of high rise. So then they can immediately dive down to wherever the contract is and try and get it done. Or if you've got a vehicle, you can often just run the HVT target over and complete it that way. The next mission, Roof Rat, is another quite easy one. It asks you to kill 20 enemies in Amazo City by headshot with sniper rifle. That's easy because it can just be AI, so just go into Almazra City and then shoot people with a sniper rifle, shoot the AI of sniper rifles in the head. Very simple. And then the next part is a little bit trickier. It says kill six operators in Almazra City with a sniper rifle. That sounds quite tricky, but if you hang around Amazra City, you're going to find other players all the time. You can do hunt squad contracts to try and find some. And if you're up somewhere high, like maybe on top of the police academy or up on high rise, you can often kill people before they really know where you are. So it might take a little bit of time to kill all six operators, but you can get this done. You can use any sniper rifle you want to just build like your absolute best signal 50 build so you can get that second shot in and finish them off very quickly. If you've got squad mates who can help you do this, obviously even better. I think if they use sniper rifles, it also counts, but that's not confirmed. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it counts if other people get the kills with the sniper rifle too. The next mission, Unarmed and Dangerous, is another one that sounds a lot harder than it is. You have to infill solo without any weapons, so when you set up your loadout, don't put any weapons on at all. I'm not sure if you're allowed lethal equipments, but maybe don't just in case. And then you have to exfil in the same deployment without picking up any weapons. Now, one of the nice things about this is that you're not really risking anything by doing it, so even if it takes a few tries, it's not like you're losing insured weapons or keys or anything like that. Just do the same thing as you did before, go in, immediately try to find an exfil site, you're not going to be able to do a hostage contract for this one, get to that exfil site as quickly as you can, and then just hope that no one comes to try and kill you. 
The next mission, Vintage Connoisseur, can take quite a few games to complete. It asks you to deliver 20 wine bottles at any dumpster dead drop, deliver 11 aged wine bottles to any dumpster dead drop, and then extract three vintage wine bottles. To do this, basically, we just kept on going to the resort, just to the west of Sarif Bay, the one I talked about before. Just keep going there, raid all of the fridges, get all of the wine bottles you can. If they're aged wine bottles or they're anything except for vintage wine bottles, basically, then go to the dead drop, maybe the one near Cemetery, go drop off stuff there, that'll get that part of it completed. And then if you find any vintage wine bottles, make sure you don't put them in a dead drop, make sure you keep them in your inventory for when you extract. This will probably take a few games, but it's not like it's very difficult. The next mission, the whale, is probably the trickiest one in this tier, and it's the one I'd skip if I were you. It asks you to extract with a single backpack carrying $200,000 in cash and valuables, and that's a huge amount of money. So if you are trying to do this, I would make sure you've got a squad, make sure you've got three players, and then just do loads of contracts. So hit up those radiation contracts because you get all of the loot from them as well as money for doing the contract. Do all of the destroy supplies contracts because that will show you where safes are so you can raid those and get some stuff. If you've got any keys, try and save up a load of good ones that are in one area and then hit lots of those buildings that have loads of stuff in them. So places like the Channel 7 editorial office where it's fairly safe and you can get quite a lot of loot in there. All the chemical storage warehouse, places like that, big buildings that have lots of loot in. Hit as many of those up as you can in one game. And then at the end of the game, just before you extract, make sure the entire squad gives one player all of the money and that will hopefully push them over $200,000. This is a very difficult thing to do. That's a huge amount of money, but that's the only way I can see that you can do this. After quite a hard tier, the last mission in this, the story mission for tier 3, is super easy. It's called Natural Treasure, and basically you have to go and find three hidden containers. It says, locate and loot the first hidden container at the oasis east of Tarak, locate and loot the second hidden container, and then locate the third hidden container and extract the irradiated drill found inside. So this is super simple to do. These are the three locations. First of all, the information in the mission objective is just wrong. The oasis is at the west of Tarak, but go out to that oasis and you'll find the hatch there and that little bit of land that sticks out into the pool. Then for the second container, it's way down at the south of the map. There's these little bits of land that stick out underwater in between two of them. You'll find the, the second container. And then the third one is right in the north side of the map. There's the river that goes north. On the east bank of that river, there's some rocks. Just behind those rocks, you'll find the last container. From that last container, you'll get the irradiated drill that you need to extract with. So make sure you put it in your inventory and then just extract with it and that'll complete. You don't need to get all of these done in one mission. So if you do a couple of the containers and then die, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to go back and do them again. You just need to end up extracting that irradiated drill. Now we're on to tier four and things get even harder. So the first one, Paper Shredder, actually isn't too bad, but it takes a while. It asks you to extract eight Alcatala planning diagrams, eight Alcatala planning photos, and then four pieces of Black Mouse Intel. I've heard of loads of theories about where these spawn better than others. We found a load of the planning diagrams in this sort of ammo dump buildings, you know, those big rectangular buildings that have a courtyard in the middle. We found a bunch of them there. The planning photos, we find a lot of them in Rohan Oil and in the quarry, but I think you can kind of find them anywhere. One thing to note is that at the time of recording, this mission is a little bit bugged in that it will count the number of diagrams you have as the number of photos and vice versa. So if you get all of the diagrams by the mission objectives and it says you need four photos, you don't actually have all of the diagrams. You need four more photos. They're the wrong way around, they're swapped. I don't know why. You also need to extract four pieces of Black Mouse Intel. You can find that in Rohan Oil. There's a bunch of it laying around. They just look like pieces of paper, essentially. So pick those up and then extract with all of those to complete it. You don't need to do all of this in one mission again, so you can do this over lots and lots of missions. The next mission, Harmful Waves, is an absolute nightmare, but you can get it done in one game. You just really need a squad for this. So it asks you to kill 35 enemies with a suppressed designated marksman rifle with headshots in Zyra Observatory at a range of fewer than three meters. So basically, you need to set up a suppressed designated marksman rifle. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, that you can use the FTAC recon if you want to. Make sure it's got a suppressor on it, and then get to Zyra Observatory and run around shooting enemies point blank. Three meters is not far at all. So you basically need to run straight up to them. You can use things like stun grenades and flash grenades will help a bunch of this. Also helps if you've got some squad mates who can keep on reviving you because you will almost definitely die a bunch. Zyra Observatory is a very dangerous place to be and they can obviously carry munitions crates and things like that and use their stuns and their flashes to help you. 
This is a pain, but you can get it done very, very quickly. You just need to be kind of a little bit foolhardy and often end up getting killed a bunch. The next mission, Eye in the Sky, isn't too difficult, but it does take a surprising amount of time to do this all in one game. You have to loot five airplane supply drops in one deployment. So usually in a the game there'll be three, completely free supply drops, they'll just drop from a plane at some point. You need to make sure you loot all of those, and then you need two others. So the easiest way to do that is just to get SAM sites, keep on getting SAM sites, every time they shoot down a plane, go and capture the loot from it. You should be able to get five done without too much trouble, just make sure you've got a fast vehicle, ideally a helicopter or something like that, so you can make sure you get to the drops before anybody else does. The next mission, Silent and Deadly, is super annoying, but it's quite easy to do. It just asks you to kill 50 enemies with a suppressed Fennec 45 with a Fennec double tap mod attached, and then kill 21 enemies with melee weapons. Thankfully, this is all AI. The Fennec with the double tap mod is basically useless. It's an awful gun. It fires two bullets that don't do very much damage with each little burst. So you just need to go around and kill loads of AI. Much, much easier to do this at the very beginning of the game because then the AI don't have armor and you can kill them much easier. If you get them in the head, they'll go down fairly quickly. Killing 21 enemies with melee weapons, obviously super easy. Again, much easier to do before they get armor. So you don't have to do this all in one game. You can easily just keep taking that insured weapon in with you and get it done with any unarmored enemies you see and then carry on with some other missions. Then at the beginning of your next game, do the same and you should be able to get them done fairly quick. The next mission, the Golden Rule, is probably the one I'd skip if you were trying to do this in a rush. It asks you to deliver 20 gold bars to a dumpster dead drop south of um, Al Sharon Pass, and then deliver 13 gold skulls to that same dumpster. Finding gold bars and gold skulls is just kind of a matter of luck. Anytime you go in a building that's normally locked, you've got a chance of finding them. Any supply drops that drop from planes, you've got a chance of finding them. But it is just RNG and they are quite rare. We got the gold bars fairly quickly, but the gold skulls are much harder. Annoyingly, you can't use the golden skull for my other video about the kind of Easter egg one because that's a unique golden skull with glyphs on it and stuff. That one doesn't count. That would actually make this much easier. But yeah, you just need to keep on playing, keep on looking at all those supply drops, use any keys you find, and hopefully eventually you'll get it. The next mission, Bullfighter, is quite simple. It just asks you to kill 30 stronghold guards, which is very simple, just go in lots of strongholds and kill all of the guards inside, and then execute seven Alcatala soldiers who are wearing riot shields. Now, the easiest way we found to do this is if there's two of us, one person gets their attention and the other one goes up behind him and executes them. That's very simple. If you're doing a solo, you're probably going to need stun grenades or flash grenades or something so you can get behind them without them turning around. If you need to find riot shield guards, there's normally two in every locked stronghold, but also in Rohan Oil, if you go down to the tunnels, there's like five or six spawn there, so you can get this done very, very quickly. For the last mission of tier 4, breaking and entering, you need the Al Bagra Fortress key. Now you can get this as a mission reward from the White Lotus tier 5 mission deadlines if you want to get it that way, or sometimes this one's actually sold in buy stations. But anyway, once you've got that key, you need to travel to the sewer under Al Bagra Fortress. Now this is a big denied area, an alarm goes off as soon as you go in, and there's loads of really tough enemies in there. Now as soon as you go in, you've got 4 minutes to reroute 7 security devices to unlock the system architecture's container. So these security devices are basically grey panels on the wall, they look like junction box type things. There's 7 of those hidden around the place, they're not really hidden very well, they're in fairly plain sight. But you need to try and get around the entire place in 4 minutes, interact with all of those and then it'll unlock you'll know when you've interacted with one because it'll give you a little tick of mission progress so it should be fairly easy to keep track of as with most of these missions this is much easier in a squad if only because there's loads of quite hard enemies in here and you don't want to go down and end up wasting loads of time four minutes is actually quite a long time to get this done so don't rush don't get yourself killed just move through it methodically clear out every room and then look for the gray boxes then finally, you need to loot and extract the system architecture documentation. This is in the box that you just unlocked. So in the pool, in the very middle of it, there's like a little courtyard pool area. Underwater there, there'll be a box that'll be unlocked. That'll have some system architecture documentation in it. You need to pick that up and then extract. If you die before you extract, annoyingly, you have to do this entire thing again. So you'll have to get another key. You'll have to go around and do the whole thing in less than four minutes to unlock that box because that's the only way you can get that system architecture documentation. 
Now we're on tier five of Black Mouse and things start getting incredibly tough. So the first one without a trace asks you to kill 31 operators, that's players, with a suppressed MCPR 300 with a Raptor FVM 40. That's a scope that you get by, um, I think you have to level up the Victus all the way up and an SC one megawatt PEQ laser attached at a range of over 200 meters. This is pretty tricky, 200 meters is a very, very long way. We find it easier to do this right off spawn, so as soon as you spawn, especially if you're near the city, try and get up somewhere high and take out any players you can see that are 200 meters away. You can also obviously camp x fills if you want to be horrible like that, so climb up radio towers and things like that near the x fills Because you've got the rangefinder scope on it, you can work out where it's exactly 200 meters away quite easily and compensate for bullet drop, but downing someone and then getting the finishing shot on them is quite tough. If you've got squad mates, what I'd strongly suggest is you stay 200 meters away and try and down people with it and then have your squad mates push up to try and finish them off. That'll still count for you as long as you down them or if your squad mates down someone and then you finish them off from 200 meters away with that gun, that counts too. You can also do kind of a little bit of a trick where if you down someone with this gun and then get 200 meters away and then they die, that works as well. That counts as 200 meters, even if you weren't quite far enough away. So if you down someone and you realize, oh, it's only 150 meters, try and get 50 meters away and then just hope that they bleed out. Annoyingly, teammate progress doesn't count for this one like it does for a lot of the other weapon challenges. So if a teammate manages to down an enemy with this exact gun and then you manage to finish them off, it only counts as one. It doesn't count as two like it did for the FTAC recon mission. The next mission, Information Overload, does take quite a long time, but it's fairly simple. You just have to extract 24 UAVs, advanced UAVs, or counter UAVs, deliver 35 recon drones to any dumpster dead drop, and then extract 20 encrypted hard drives. So this just takes a lot of games. The UAVs, you can buy them from stores, so just whenever you've got money in the game, check any buy stations you can find, and if you see a UAV, buy it, and then make sure you extract with it. When you're delivering the 35 recon drones, you can obviously go in with a recon drone, but you do find them quite commonly in the game. So that shouldn't be too hard. You can just drop them off at any dead drop. The encrypted hard drives are a bit trickier. I would use that server room near the police academy again. Lots of computers in there or any of the bank buildings. You've always got a chance of finding an encrypted hard drive in there. Generally, when we were doing it, if we checked that entire police academy server room, we might find one, maybe two. On a good game, we might find three. So this takes a lot of games to complete. If you do things like safes and uh, drops that drop from planes and things like that, you've also got a chance of getting encrypted hard drives or opening up buildings with keys. Often you'll find encrypted hard drives in there. So if you've got any keys, you can use them on this. They're all going to go in the wipe anyway, so why not? The next mission, The Client is King, isn't too difficult. It asks you to complete eight contracts in eight unique points of interest in one deployment. Now, the key thing here is that the contracts don't have to be unique like they did for that Legion mission. So you can do like high value target missions in all of them because they're super easy to do or recon missions or even destroy supplies, something like that that's very, very easy. Just make sure you're doing them in the different points of interest. Things like the radiation ones are great because once you've picked up a Geiger counter once, you don't need to do that again, so they're very quick. Just try to pick missions that you're fairly confident you can do fast and then immediately get to the next point of interest. But this should be fairly easy. You shouldn't have too much trouble with this one. The next mission, Weapons Chase, is one of the hardest missions in the game. It asks you to extract free weapon cases without dying. So that means usually going and finding the juggernaut, killing the juggernaut, pick up the weapons case and get out again without dying and then do that three times. If at any point in any of the games, after you've picked up your first one, you die, the progress on this mission resets to zero. So it's not like you can choose to do one of them and then go do other stuff and then come back and do the second one a different time. If you die in the middle part of time, it resets to zero. So again, I would strongly suggest doing hostage contracts to give you a safe place to exfil. So do the hostage contract first, get the hostage ready next to the helicopter, then go kill the juggernaut, pick up the weapons case and jump down and get there. If you die, even if you get resed by your squad mates, it resets it. So you can't go down at all. If you're the person who actually has this contract, it's a fairly good idea to just try and stay completely safe. Maybe even stay near the hostage while your teammates go get the weapon case, just so then if they die, you can still extract and then you can go back in and try and do it in a different game. The next mission, Kennel, is weirdly easy for a mission that's this far down the list, but it just asks you to extract 30 enemy dog tags and then kill 45 operators with a suppressed assault rifle. Obviously, that's a lot of players. Like, 45 operators is a lot of players, 
and you know 30 enemy dog tags that's a lot of dog tags but you can use a suppressed assault rifle and obviously assault rifles are pretty good in this game so you can use something like the TAC 56 for this make sure it's got a suppressor on it and you don't have to do it in one game obviously so you can do this across many many games and eventually you'll get it done it's quite nice that it's actually asking you to use a decent gun for this with the dog tags make sure you always pick up the dog tags off the enemies i know it does mark your location but if you've killed an entire squad that doesn't matter because the only people who see your location are the other people on that squad the next mission, Hunting Party, is another really difficult one. It asks you to complete five Hunt PMC unit contracts without dying. So this is the Hunt Squad contracts, the skulls where you have to go fight other players. You need to try and do five of those without dying. Now again, it's only the person who has the mission that can't die. So if you want, you can stay back a little bit. You could be doing some of those sniper kills for without a trace or something like that. And then send your teammates in to go and try and kill those squads. And if it goes wrong, you can at least extract to live for another day to keep it going. Five is quite a lot. At some point, your luck's going to run out and you're going to hit a really tough enemy squad. So just try to be super careful to make sure you're not the one that dies. Now, I would strongly suggest, like I said earlier on in this video, do these at the beginning of games. Don't try to get all five done in one match. Do them at the very beginning where you're going to come up against lots of much, much easier player squads, people who haven't found decent army yet, people who don't have decent guns yet. I would say maybe just get two done in a game and then exfil, then go into another game, get two done, exfil, then go back and do your last one. If you push your luck, you're going to end up coming across a really tough squad at some point. For the last mission of Tier 5 of Black Mouse Flight Plans, I actually made a whole different video as a guide showing all of these locations, so go check that out if you want more detail on it. But basically, to complete this, you need two keys. You need the air traffic control tower key that you can sometimes buy from buy stations or you can find it as a random drop, and you need the Channel 7 editorial office key, which is just a random drop, unfortunately. And obviously, if you die while on this mission, you'll lose both the keys, which means you have to go find them again before you can try it again. That's the really tough part. The actual mission isn't too bad. So the first thing you have to do is loot the free hacked thumb drives. You get these from the dumpster dead drop in the city, just in the canals area. By now you should know where this is, but I'm just showing you on the video just in case. Pick up all of those thumb drives, and then you need to go to three different locations. The first one is in the air traffic control tower. So you can go in there and go all the way up to the top and you'll find this computer. Interact with it. The interact prompt is very small and kind of hidden, but you should be able to find it and then that will complete the first part of it. Then you need to go to the North Observatory. You don't actually need a key to get into this one, so you can just go put the thumb drive in the computer in here as I'm showing you in the video. And then you need to go to Channel 7 Editorial Office. So this is up in the TV station. Go up to the top floor, unlock the special room, and then one of the computers will have this prompt and then you can put it in there and you would have completed this. Frustratingly, you do have to do all of this in one deployment. So if you get two of them done and then you die, it's not like you can just go complete the last part of it. You do actually need to go and do all three of them in one go. Very frustrating, but that's the way it is. Now, hopefully, you've completed all of Black Mouse. So if you found this video and it took a very long time to make this kind of thing, please consider checking out the links from my sponsor, FlexiSpot, who made the standing desk and sent one over to me. It's absolutely awesome. Leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. When season two rolls around, as quickly as possible, I'll have guides for all of those missions. And obviously, I'll be streaming the whole thing right here on YouTube, normally 9am on weekdays. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.